Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today, this is a fundamental tutorial talking about uh, rendering in simulation nodes. So here we in Blender, and this is a very simple setup. I have a cube inside the simulation zone. I have a set position to offset my cube on the X axis at a rate of 0 0.1 meter per frame. And I add a emission shader so that I can visualize in the final render. Now, if I play this animation, you can see this cube is moving to the right with FPS 30. So everything is normal. Uh, it's very simple. You can visualize or observe everything in real time. However, if you try to render this animation, then you will see that this cube is not moving at all. Okay. Normally, to solve this problem, you go to the physics tab. Uh, we have a physics tab, and inside that you have these simulation nodes. You can calculate to frame or your bake. Usually, bake will solve all the problem because calculate to frame is de depends on the cache you already created. For example, if you play this animation, you can see there are kind of a purple strips uh, at the bottom of this timeline. It, it actually means the cache you have at this moment. So you calculate to frame, you bake up to this moment, but you don't have cache afterwards. So you still have to bake all simulations. Okay. But there are several issues when you try to bake this simulation. One is that uh, currently the Blender is generating an extremely large file size for cache. You can try by yourself. Um, but it's very huge for simulation nodes. Uh, the developer said it's possible to improve it in the future, but it's not happening now. And uh, maybe people will say that, oh, I have a billion terabytes on my PC, so I don't give a shit to that. But to me, I worry because I'm running a laptop and I'd rather to spend my drive space for many other resources instead of this cache file. Okay. And the second thing is that uh, this is such a simple setup. It's not like we have a rigid body or we have a soft body, we have a cloth simulation or we have smoke or we have fluid simulation. It's nothing like that. It's really just to move a cube at a constant rate. Although for the setup as simple as this, it does not really take any time for baking. But I don't see a very strong necessity of that, especially if you change the parameters, you have to preview the animation, you bake it, render, you change the parameters, you bake it again, and so on. Um, it's not a very convenient in my opinion. So is that possible that I want to render without baking? There's a kind of workarounds, uh, which you may or may not select that, uh, because the whole idea is that you do the viewport animation. You can do that without baking. So if now I try to viewport in this animation, you can see it generated cache in real time and the cube is moving. Okay. Of course, there are many downsides with this methods. Uh, first of all, it only works for EV. Okay. Uh, it does not work for cycle. So if you're a user which heavily relies on cycle, then you have, to, you cannot do this. And the second kind of thing is that you cannot really use the compositor because it basically only shows the viewport rendering. Of course, there are kind of work around to that as well, but uh, I don't think it's worth to do compared to baking and rendering the animation. Okay. Um, other than that, you really just need to disable the view or uh, viewport overlay and then you just render it. Uh, of course, there are some tiny settings that you have to tweak uh, render and the viewport. But uh, for me, since I mostly render my animation in EV, this method is perfectly suitable for me. So what this may or may not help you as well. Okay. At the last, I want to remind you about this viewport render animation again. 
it's not necessary for simulation nodes, but uh, sometimes it's possible that the geometry nodes is giving you different results between this viewport and the final render. There can be many reasons. For example, some people is using its viewport node to give different results, or sometimes they have subdivision surface modifier giving different results uh, between viewport and the render. Or sometimes it can be an actual bug within the node itself. For example, maybe this set position node is broken, so it gives a wrong result between viewport and the render. I remember there used to be a case that uh, the normal node uh, is broken. So you get different results between viewpoint and render at that time. Uh, I remember there used to be a case like this, but I can have wrong memory. And it's not uncommon to have this kind of broken things. Uh, recently, I found a broken things, and I didn't have time to really investigate what caused uh, this viewport and the render inconsistency. It's a very annoying thing, um, but as a potential solution, you can use this viewport render animation if you rely on EV and you do not really compositing within Blender. For me, it solves the problem perfectly. Of course, it would always be better if you can come back and investigate the bug in your node tree and potentially you may report this bug to Blender Foundation so that uh, in the future people can really use the render animation so that they can use the compositing in Blender and that they can use the cycle. Okay, so that's it. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.